Hello, welcome on Al Control. Tatiana here. Um, I haven't made a video for a while now, and that's because I'm really busy. And part of why I'm busy is that I'm currently working on an alternative control game playable at home. And today I'd like to talk about exactly that video games using ordinary controllers, but in a really weird way. So let's get started. Quick intro for those of you who don't know, by the end of November 2020, when it became obvious that venues and on-site events weren't reopening before long, I started a game jam on itch.io titled Al Control at Home, so Al Control devs could keep on making Al Control games and showcase them despite the lack of on-site events. We got really cool entries for this jam, so I ran another one the following year, this time in partnership with Amaze, and we again got very original games. And now it's November 2022, so it's time for the third edition of the Al Control at Home Jam. The jam will open today and will stay up for about a month. In preparation for this, I decided to make a list of small original video games using conventional controllers in a non-conventional way. This is not a top, there is no particular order here, just a bunch of cool, creative and yet very confidential games. I'll go through six standard devices with three games for each device, the last one being my personal favorite. And we'll start with the mouse. Shuriken. So, Shuriken is one of the two games made by Jonathan West making a creative use of a mouse. In this one, you gotta use your unlimited supply of throwing stars, um, see how long you can last against the onslaught. The game is free to play on itch.io, you should check it out. And once you are there, also check Sustenance, the other game John made making a weird use of a mouse. Holy shit! Um, I love a game or any product really named after what the consumer's reaction will be instead of the content. You know, like, I can believe it's not better. But holy shit is not one of them. It's a game for 10 players with 10 mice connected to a single computer. 9 players play a food character, while the 10th player plays an actual secret little poop trying to hug and contaminate the others. The game was made during the famous Al Control Game Jam Zoom Machines by a lot of awesome devs from the art game and indie games community. Roller Cars. Roller Cars is a game made by Archbang for the Al Control at Home 2020. It's a simple creative concept. As the title suggests, in this game you gotta flip the mouse around, press the wheel down and drag the mouse as you would for a toy car. Then release and steer with arrow keys to see how far you can go. The game is free to play on itch.io, you should check it out. Keyboards. Thai Simulator 2020 so Time Sim 2020 is another game made for the Al Control at Home Jam. This one's made by the Spanish dev Ludipe. As the title suggests, this game is, and I quote, a very serious game about tying a tie made by a developer who has never tied one, and he chose. This game requires you to hold your keyboard in front of your chest and then twist your fingers to hold keys indicated on the screen. This game is also free to play so go check it out. Snailed it. Snailed it is a special game I made with the indie dev duo Major Bueno during a game jam for RT, the TV channel, as part of a cool trip they made around Europe called Tour Bueno. The idea is that they were traveling in different European cities and made a game with one dev from each city they visited. And when they came to Paris, we made this game. Snailed it is a competitive game for three players sharing a single keyboard and the same avatar a snail moving from vertex to vertex on a graph. All the nearest nodes to the snail display a random letter and pressing on one of these letter keys pushes the snail towards it. Players must lead the snail to an end of their color, leading to a physical fight over the keyboard. The game was made in Flash, but if you got a Flash player, you can still play on the Tour Bueno page. Trackball Driver Installation Disk 
So Trackball Driver Installation Disc is a game made by the New York-based dev Johnny Hopkins for the a game by its cover 2020 Game Jam. Using a tennis ball and a keyboard, the game presents itself as the calibration tool for a new cutting-edge trackball controller for the fictional brand Thwacksoft. I love the old retro aesthetic of it. The game is playable on Johnny's H the Tile page. Gamepads. Over the River. Over the River is a beautiful and chill rough trip made for four players by some of my students for the Cloud Gaming Jam 2020. In this game, you gotta paddle on your raft by rotating each joystick. You can play it as a 1v1 game if you got enough coordination and two game pads. You can try it on the Edge the Title page. Good Soup MF. Good Soup MF is my entry for the All Control at Home 2020 jam. In this game, you have to grab a pair of chopsticks and use them to move the joysticks of your gamepad to eat very special noodles. The game is playable on my itch.io page, Macbird. IKEA Station IKEA Station is a game made by the artist Antonin Fourneau. I talked about him in other videos as he is the co-founder of one of the coolest all control events called Inyarov. In this game, there are no screen. Instead, you use an IKEA table and put a bunch of glasses on it. You play with a gamepad using its vibration to move the glasses around. And there are several games that can be played with this installation, like racing or fighting games. Phone. Space Team. Okay, Space Team is not really a confidential game, I guess, but I think it fits nicely here. And well, that's my video, so I can do whatever I want. And it's still an indie game anyway. So Space Team is a cooperative party game for two to eight players who shout techno bubble at each other until their ship explodes. Each player needs a mobile device, um, an Android and Apple devices can play together over Wi-Fi. You'll be assigned a random control panel with buttons, switches, sliders, and dials. You need to follow time-sensitive instructions. However, the instructions are being sent to your teammates, so you have to coordinate before the time runs out. Also, the ship is falling apart, and you are trying to outrun an exploding star. The game is free to play and a lot of fun. You should really give it a try. Dive Another Way Dive Another Way is a game made by Copenhagen-based indie devs for the Exile Game Jam 2015. It requires not only a phone, but also a kiddie pool filled with water. Players gotta synchronize their diving by throwing their phones into the air to receive a score based on technicality, jump height and synchronicity. Obviously, your phone may not survive it, uh, so play at your own risk. The APK is available on their itch.io page. Bounden. Bounden is a whimsical, cooperative dancing game for two players. You gotta twist and twirl elegantly or get entangled with a friend. Holding either end of a device, you tilt the device around a virtual sphere following a path of rings. You swing your arms and twist your body and before you know it, you are already dancing. The game was made in partnership with the Dutch National Ballet by a company I a door called Game Oven that unfortunately closed down in 2015. They made another incredible game, this time for a tablet, titled Fingal. It's a sort of cooperative finger and twister game that I highly encourage you to check out if you never did. Camera. When it comes to webcams, there are no real common ways to use it in a game anyway, so I'll go with three game archetypes rather than actual games to tackle this topic. Body-based physics. The first one is everything using the player's body to interact with digital game objects, like Don't Pop My Balloon. This game was made for the All Control Jam 2016 by Buenos Aires-based indie game dev Agustin Perez Fernandez, a 
aka Tenbachi. It's a competitive game for two players. The first player must hit the targets on screen using a real balloon, and the second player has to pop the first player's balloon before all the targets are hit. In the same category, I put Smog Pong by Oliver van Veldhoven, a game I talked about in my one before last video where two players play Pong using SIGs. Paper based. The second archetype is everything based on paper. In this category, I put games like Flip Paper, a game made by Jeremy Cortial and Roman Miletic. It's a sort of pinball where players can draw their own level using a color code. Blue for walls, red for bumpers, green for speed increasing items and yellow for points to collect. Or that Perry Owens game I quickly mentioned in my my last video where players can cast spells using QR codes taped on their hands. Shape fitting games. The final archetype is shape fitting games where players have to fit in shapes to win. I'm thinking about fitting, that's a game made by some of my students during my owl control class. Ninja Shadow Warrior by the amazing Kaho Abe, La Discipline du Rectangle by the collective One Life Remains, or No Pain No Gain, where there is a twist as you don't only need to fit the shape, but you gotta do so by jumping against a vertical called Matt. Microphone. Tower up. So Tower Up is an audio reactive local multiplayer game using microphones made by the game designer Fabian Mora. Players raise their tower from one point to another using their voice. Different sounds move the tower forward and the arrow keys give direction to the tower to avoid the obstacles along the way. Whoever reaches the other planet first wins. Work! What's wrong with these developers and their weird games titles? <laughs> so Work is a turn-based yelling games for three players made by Tim Garbos for a French Al Control event called Retro No Future. Each player plays as a different construction manager in a company. Players take turn to yell work to their workmen the loudest possible in order to finish their building before their opponents. And finally, Lupa. Lupa is a game also made for Retro in the Future by the game dev Brice Duba, aka Pitoum, with graphics made by Delphine Fourneau, aka Ziv. The game requires the use of both a microphone and a webcam. Lupa demands that you flash your breasts to make an on-screen prostitute do the same, beckoning um, over a new client. You then emulate moaning sounds to fake an orgasm and earn money from your client. However, you must stop if a police car drives by. If the police notices your activities, you will have to take more risks to keep on working, and by doing so, you risk getting um, brutalized or worse. I'm sure you know what I mean. Or get an STD. What I love about this game is that it first appears to be a humorous game, but ends up making a point on the conditions of sex workers. Obviously, I couldn't mention every game making a weird use of an ordinary controller. I chose not to cover mainstream games, but even in the small indie games world, there are many other gems. Please don't be mad at me for not mentioning your favs and add them in the comment section below instead. As I said at the beginning, there is an All Control at Home jam starting today. You can submit any game that fits the theme. By the end of the jam, I'll playtest all the games I can afford to play with the devices I have. I'll also add the games to a playlist I made on itch.io titled All Control Playable at Home. You can find more inspiration on Shake That Button using the tag playable at home. So that's all for today. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, take care and be playful.